if you have placed an intraocular lens and you want to calculate the required pa power of that IOL which you want to place, what are the various tests that need to be done and determined? So, what is the SRK formula for uh, the power of the IOL? How do you calculate that? The power is equal to A minus 2.5 into L minus 0 0.9 into K where uh, A is the constant which is specific for every lens type of the IOL. L is the axial length of the eyeball in millimeters and you use keratometry in order to calculate that. And K is the corneal curvature for which keratometry once more helps you. That is the reason what do you require doctor in order to calculate? You need to calculate axial length, keratometry, they are the ones which are required for IOL power calculation by using the SRK formula. Unilateral white reflex called leukocoria. Now, uh, the same patient also has a raised intraocular pressure. Then what is the important investigation that you want to basically uh, uh, in, uh, use for? Generally, retinoblastoma is the most common cause for the leukocoria. It can cause a glaucomatous evolution, one of the stages of it, where raised IOP will be formed. And uh, you have to examine the fundus and measure the IOP corneal diameter and calcification can be detected by taking a plain x-ray and uh, there can be many causes for the development of uh, a leukocoria. For example, hyperplastic vitreous, um, so many reasons are there other than uh, the retinoblastoma. But none of them lead to calcification. Calcification is a feature of an intraocular tumor if at all uh, it is showing calcification, it is only retinoblastoma which shows the calcification detectable by x-ray is what need to be remembered. And you need to do systemic investigations, lumbar puncture etc. etc. to know any extraocular extension of the retinoblastoma is what need to be remembered. What is trilateral retinoblastoma doctor? Retinoblastoma which is bilateral with penialoma. The combination is called trilateral retinoblastoma. So, time to speed up with uh, facts for the entrance doctor because uh, entrance may uh, these are all common common tidbit questions. Uh, agoraphobia we read a lot about it. So, phobic anxiety is there, avoidance is there, irritability is there and they have a great worry about uh, crowds, heights. They feel very insecure in all such locations. Typically crowded places, public places, traveling away from home, traveling alone, they are all really worried and they avoid that phobic situation is what need to be remembered. Alcohol withdrawal is one of the challenge as a psychiatrist, physician, you have to handle this situation. So, acamprosate, naltrexone, we also use SSRIs, disulfiram in order to rehabilitate the alcoholic individual. And we can use certain deterrents which create a reaction which makes him to avoid alcohol, disulfiram, citrated calcium carbide, metronidazole, animal charcoal, etc., etc. are the ones which are being commonly used. Each pregnancy is a contraindication for electroconvulsive therapy. How many would vote against and for it? Common sense is probably it may not be because fetus is there, mother is there. So many convulsions created can cause problem anywhere. But ECT is not contraindicated in pregnancy is a carry home message, frequently tested topic uh, in entrance. And are there any reasons for ECT in pregnancy? Definitely. A woman who had a psychiatric depression became pregnant, going towards a suicidal tendency, you have to rescue, definitely there are a lot of indications. So, raised intracranial tension is an absolute contraindication, but recent MI, severe hypertension, CVA, retinal detachment, PHEO, severe pulmonary disease, they are all considered with the relative contraindications and pregnancy is not a contraindication for ECT is what need to be remembered. So, what are the features of mania doctor? Increased speech, four hours of lecturing, grandiosity, coming in Mercedes to deliver a lecture. Then uh, elevated mood, I had one Brazilian speaker in the other day I was in a human resource management conference 
that Brazilian speaker has traveled all the way from Brazil to India to deliver a lecture. So generally in India, if the teacher uh, opens a bottle and drinks, uh, do you think uh, the students accept? Impossible. So suddenly he said, you should all apologize to me. I had a jet lag uh, and went and opened uh, the, um, uh, it was a five star hotel where he was delivering the lecture. He opened and then had a wine and drinking. Then I thought uh, probably this privilege should also be there for Indian teachers like us, right? So that's, uh, I mean for them it's like almost like drinking water. For us, two days of mental preparation will be there before we plan for boozing, right? <laughs> so it is not uh, increased sleep, rather uh, it is decreased sleep. Elevated mood and absent insight, they are all the important reasons. Acne vulgaris, lichen planus, pemphigus vulgaris, we must be sure for entrance doctor. So it is a chronic inflammatory state, acne, vulgaris, pilosebaceous unit, sebum production, hypercornification will be there production of inflammation and it starts in adolescence and um, typically uh, between 16 to 19 common in males, 14 to 17 common in females uh, and uh, it is the androgen which is causing excessive sebum production. So the clear cell advertisement talks about a female with uh, uh, muhasum but uh, men with muhasum are much more common. What is that? What is the word doctor? Uh, clear cell advertisement, right? So that's important. No biases and guesses in exam. We must be sure which is more common men or women. Epidermolysis, bullosa is a congenital condition, dreadful. There's a decreased adhesion, fibrils, blistering of the skin, mucosa, even with a mild trauma itself. And the mutation is there in uh, basal keratin and uh, uh, basal epidermis, that is the reason their uh, skin become much more uh, easy and uh, get uh, easily removed. And uh, there is a deposition of immunoglobulins G in the keratinocytes which is responsible for all that keratinolysis. Let us talk about the buprenorphine and what is its uh, potency in relationship with the morphine. Morphine is like a uh, god, it will decide uh, how others should be graded, 10 milligrams of morphine equal to 30 milligrams of pentajosin, nalbofin is 10 milligrams, butorphanol is 2 milligrams, buprenorphine 0.2 milligrams and uh, fentanyl is 0.1 milligrams as much effective as 10 milligrams of morphine, pethidine is 75 milligrams. So steroids and their potency, opioids and their potency, different things, common question exam. How much hydrocortisone is equal to how much dexamethasone is equal to how much uh, prednisolone? What is the relationship about doctor? 1, 4, 10. Hydro, predni, dexa. So you must be sure on all these values doctor. Now sufentanil equal to 0 0.01 mg equal to 10 mg of morphine etc. etc. At least let us remember what examiner asked for this time. Uh, buprenorphine is equal to 25 milligrams. Uh, 0.5 milligram of buprenorphine is equal to 25 milligrams of morphine equal to 250 milligrams of tramadol, common uh, painkiller we all prescribe, which is equal to 75 milligrams of pentajosin is what need to be remembered. Intraoperatively, suppose if there is any mismatched blood transfusion, how does it present itself? It lead to bleeding from the areas of uh, operative field, hypotension and it can be bronchospasm, sometimes rash, they all can be the presenting feature. At a later point, renal dysfunction with oliguria, jaundice become a problem, articarial rash, bronchospasm due to the anaphylaxis initiated by that uh, mismatched transfusion, they are all the common uh, presenting features. Tonicate, how much pressure you should apply in order to control the lower limb, uh, uh, I mean if you want to uh, prevent uh, return from the lower limb and then want to pull the blood. So typically about 100 millimeters of mercury above the systolic blood pressure should be the tonicate pressure and in upper limb it is systolic blood pressure plus 50 milligrams of mercury should be the pressure uh, that you should apply for the tonicate. Then local anesthetics typically they can cause uh, uh, toxicity by drug interactions. So, um, and uh, whenever there is a local uh, uh, anesthetic toxicity, how do you want to manage? Most common reason patient of uh, local anesthetic die is because they are all sodium channel 
um, blockers that is the reason arrhythmias can be a possibility. Antiarrhythmics, IV fluids, anticonvulsants, oxygen, prevention of acidosis, giving benzodiazepines if there is a congenital heart, I mean if there is any heart block, atropine etc etc should be used. What is gamma knife doctor? There is no knife actually like a kitchen's knife. It is the cutting of the tumors by using the radiation which comes out of uh, the cobalt is the one which is commonly used cobalt 60. Tacticuris is the one which is placed in a circular array in a heavily shielded unit and that is used basically as a part of the radiotherapy in the gamma knife. Uh, so where do you use that? Benign and malignant brain tumors, AV malformations if there is any pain like trigeminal neuralgia. Sometimes in epileptic focus to exterminate it and also acoustic neuromide can be very much be used. If there is any calcification of the urinary bladder, what are the causes for it? Typically in the lumen, calculus foreign body and uh, in the wall you can see along the circumference of the wall there is a development of calcification. So transitional and squamous cell carcinoma, cystosomiasis, tuberculosis, cyclophosphamide induced cystitis, the oil can be responsible for the bladder wall calcification. Linear accelerator, what is it exactly doing? The main advantage of this linear accelerator which is uh, operating at a mega voltage unit is uh, it will produce x-rays and electrons with a great amount of energy and accordingly you have HELA and LELA. What is HELA? High energy linear accelerator and low energy. So where do you use these uh, linear accelerators doctor? Stereotactic radio surgery where you require a high energy beam. Similarly, um, there is a method called intensity modulated radiotherapy. Only certain areas of the malignancy receive certain proportion of uh, radiation so that uh, normal tissues will not be affected. That is the purpose of using the IMRT called as uh, intensity modulated radiotherapy. It is also uh, achieved by using a linear accelerator where you have a control on the intensity of the radiation. Now what are the common rays that we use for radiotherapy? X-rays, gamma rays, actual calcification, protein cushion, silicosis, sarcoidosis, common causes, MRA, magnets, no radiation, CT scan is like X-ray, radiation is there. So a patient with a prosthetic uh, should not go to MRA because of that uh, powerful magnetic uh, field. Similarly Doppler ultrasound only uses sound waves, no radiation, so it is also um, radiation free. Then what are radio sensitive tumors doctor? Seminoma, lymphoma, Ewing sarcoma, highly responsive to the radiotherapy is what need to be remembered. Then what do you mean by interstitial radiotherapy? Typically in head and neck malignancies we use a specialized form of brachytherapy where we keep a radio pellet and then give a uh, very localized radiation effect. Iridium is the one which can be used and it must be an easily accessible organ for you to place those radio pellets in the uh, interstitial radiotherapy and uh, uh, intracavitary transluminal it can be and uh, what are the various pellets you can use for uh, interstitial therapy doctor? You can use radon, cesium, iridium, iodine, palladium, strontium, any of them can very much be used uh, in this process. Miliary mottling, where do you come across? common water on cushion, tuberculosis it can lead to and also there can be um, in the case of rheumatoid arthritis and also if there is any fungal infection disseminated not in pneumocystis, pneumocystis lead to interstitial diffuse alveolar pattern type of uh, shadowing is what need to be remembered. Now what forms right border, left border, anterior border, posterior border of the heart? As a cardiologist, future cardiologist you must be very sure about. No one teaches us radiology, conventional radiology in a medical school. We all read it by following our big brother, right? So at least uh, let me play that role. So you have a superior vena cava, ascending aorta, right atrial appendage. They constitute the upper border of the right border, upper half. Then you also have right atrium which constitutes the major part of the lower half of the right border. You do not have right ventricle contributing. Why? Right ventricle is anterior, it is not lateral. 
it's more anterior so in a pa view it doesn't constitute any of the right border then the left border if you talk about it is the aortic knob then you have a pulmonary trunk which can become uh, enlarged if there's a pulmonary hypertension and the left atrial appendage and the left ventricle they all basically constitute the left border but if the left atrium happened to enlarge in mitral stenosis where will it enlarge not towards left side it will enlarge in a backward direction towards the right border and what is that called as shadow in shadow appearance if there is a mitral stenosis with the left atrial enlargement it won't enlarge towards the left border it will enlarge in a backward direction towards the right border and cause a shadow in shadow appearance is what need to be remembered now if you take a lateral radiograph then what do you basically see doctor you can see that it is the ascending aorta right ventricle right atrium they constitute the anterior border whereas the left atrium and left ventricle constitute the posterior border where is the esophagus located esophagus is towards the posterior border of the heart this is the lateral radiograph i am talking about you are able to perceive that so if there is a left atrial enlargement in mitral stenosis what will happen it will go and compress the esophagus and can lead to dysphagia as a presenting feature if there is a right upper quadrant calcification what are the important differentials doctor gallstone calcified lymph node any calcified costal cartilage and similarly any calcification of the kidney hepatic adenoma porcelain gallbladder any of them can be responsible and that finishes our journey to which year paper this is june 2006 pgi doctor thank you very much